Back at the Kingdom in beautiful Seattle, Washington, the final opening day here at the Kingdom this summer. Later on, after the All-Star break, they will move into their new ballpark, Safeco. And prior to the game, they had a spectacular pregame festivities. They had the bases lined with lights. They had the spotlights on the players. Obviously, the pitchers at that point could not be warming up. Introducing both clubs and Wimpy, you know, it's always great to come to Seattle. I wish we could open up at home every year. Obviously, you can't right. do that. But if you get to open up in some place, it's just great to be here in the great Pacific Northwest. It really is, Hawk, and, and it's a shame that we couldn't play this game outside tonight because it was a wonderful day here in the Seattle area. And, of course, the next time we come in, the new stadium, Safeco Stadium, is going to be open, the retractable roof, and it is going to be a fabulous facility. But we've got a great crowd on hand tonight. There's a few seats up there in the bleachers that are still not sat in, but uh, watching the Mariners, that's where a lot of balls were hit in batting practice today. They were just pounding the ball out of the ballpark. You know, looking at both of these ball because they both had great offensive springs hitting about 320 as a team. Pitching has struggled, though. If you look at Jeff Becero, his last couple of outings, I think in the six innings he pitched, he gave up 21 earned runs, so that's not very good. But he is 3-1 and one with a 2-1-4 earned run average against the White Sox in his career, so He's pitched the Sox hitters tough in the past, but he had to throw that fastball inside to establish the splitter away. Well, the Mariners and the Sox, really a different look for Seattle because of the fact they have six rookie pitchers on their staff. They're coming in, and the Sox coming in as the youngest team in the American League. They have an average age of 26.2. The only team in baseball that's younger than that is the Miami Marlins, the Florida Marlins, and they are at 25.9, so three months difference than that. The Mariners starting some young guys, a rookie at second base, those young rookie pitchers, as we mentioned, on their staff. And they're going to have to do it. The one thing about Seattle, they had 234 home runs last year. And, of course, the Sox at 198, establishing a new club record for them. But the Sox, not as good as catching the ball, at catching the ball, I should say, as Seattle, as you look at the two skippers right there, Vanella and Mariner. And Jay Buhner coming back just seven months ago, had serious elbow surgery. And he has made a remarkable comeback. Big Kentuckian. He's a big part of this Seattle offense and defense. They're going to have some guys out there in the outfield now when you're talking about Buner and Junior and all of a sudden John Mayberry and then going around the horns. They really only have one or two positions that are weak defensively where the Sox, well, we have a young club, and when you have a young club that's having trouble catching the baseball, they can improve as opposed to a veteran club who has trouble catching the baseball. They're not going to improve. No, no question about it. The youngsters on the White Sox, of course, you see a, a, a great difference I think up the middle. Ray Durham has been very good. He was spectacular last year defensively at second base. Mike Caruso made a lot of errors, but they were mainly of the throwing nature. And Jerry Manuel worked on his throwing delivery, got him to shorten it up a little bit, throw more like an infielder instead of an outfielder. And I think we're going to see a lot better things from Mike Caruso. Now, Greg Norton, to me, has been a big surprise at third base. He has caught it every bit as well as anybody could ever expect him to. And I think Brooke Fordyce is going to do a good job behind the plate. So it's just a, a couple of weak spots. And if the Sox can make those routine plays that we talk about so often, they can be in every ball game because Jerry Manuel really made great use of whatever speed he has in the lineup and whatever hitting abilities he had in spring training to get runners in motion and produce runs the little way because we all know that we don't have the same power that we had in that lineup last year. Well, as you mentioned earlier, the Mariners hit 322 this spring. The Sox hit 320. Mariners hit 51 home runs. Sox hit 32. Sox stole 39 bases. Seattle 14. And talking about home runs, we're going to have somebody coming through that gate in just a moment who hit a few. In fact, the 25th anniversary of his record-breaking home run. There he is. Number 44, Hammerin' Hank Aaron. He was good, wasn't he? I'll tell you, you know, you talk about guys who had that special sound when the ball hit their bat. Yeah. You could always tell when Henry Aaron was taking batting practice or playing in a game, even if you don't know who was up there, by the sound of the bat. He had that unbelievable sound. Live bat, great hands, great wrist. Oh, he was terrific. You know, he when he was 40 years old, he would still give you four quality at-bats every time he went up there. And he'd scare the daylights of any pitcher, regardless of who was out there. He's taking off his jacket now and firing it in there. Very underrated outfielder, too, from what 
we have he seen. was an outstanding outfielder and better yet he was an outstanding base runner he could steal a base he stole a lot of bases but he only stole them when they counted so the great Henry Aaron throwing out the first pitch here and his catcher was a guy who has a chance to surpass his record Ken Griffey Jr. Pretty amazing, yeah. Well, Ken Griffey Jr. coming into the season has 350 career homers, and he's just 29 years old, so you got to think that that's a great picture right there. I'd love to have one of those. you got to think that he's got a very legitimate chance of catching him. Well, Wimpy, on the other side of the page, a White Sox legend, a Hall of Famer, passed away this morning at the age of 79. Gus Wynn, early win. Baseball lost another friend today. He won the Cy Young Award back in 1959 with the Sox when he was 22 and 10. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1972. He played for 24 seasons and he won 300 games. And one of the highlights of my career as a kid, I played in the game. I hit against Gus when he won his 300th in Kansas City. Yeah, that's got to be great. Well, you know, and then, we, of course, we got to know him very well when he was announcing the ball games on radio for the White Sox. I was playing here then. Just a wonderful guy. I'll tell you what, he was so much fun to be around. He'd tell all those great baseball stories. And he was he was just so enjoyable, and he is certainly going to be missed by not only his family, but all the, the baseball family as well. I know. When I first heard about it today, Gus and I were very close. We played a lot of golf together. And I heard about it. I was very sad. But knowing early, he would not want you to sit around. In fact, if he, he could dictate what was going to be happening right now, he'd say, okay, fellas, let's all go out and have a couple of beers. <laughs> That's right. And yeah. if I go have a couple of beers, for me. Not on me, but for me. That's just the way he was. So the pitchers are still taking warm uh, warm-up tosses, I should say. Passero has concluded his. He's walking in. And right now, let's get to the starting lineups for opening day 1999 with Peru. And here they are. These are the spring numbers for the White Sox, who were 17 and 16 during that frame of time. So leading off at second base is Ray Durham. Mike Caruso bats second. He'll play shortstop, hitting 319. That's good. Frank Thomas had a good spring at 364. He'll hit in his customary third spot in the lineup. Paul Canerco earned the cleanup spot and DH at, after hitting 365. Maglia Ordonez was absolutely terrific in right field. Look at those numbers, 3, 4, 62, and he led the spring training in hitting. At third base, hitting sixth, is none other than one of our favorites, Greg Norton, 375. That's not too shabby. Jeff Abbott in left field, bat seventh, hitting eighth, and center field veteran Darren Jackson and bringing up the rear behind the plate, recently acquired Brooke Fordyce. And here is the Mariners as they look on defense. John Mabry is in left field. Ken Griffey Jr. What new is in center. And Jay Buhner coming back after that elbow surgery is in right. Russ Davis returns to third base. The great Alex Rodriguez is at shortstop. Newcomer the Guillen is at second base with David Segui outstanding at first. Behind the plate is Dan Wilson and Jeff Passero, the veteran on the mound. He's 36 years old. Jeff last year was 13 and 12 with a 397 earned run average for Seattle. Boy, he was really roughed up, as we mentioned earlier, in his last two starts. He was 3 0 in the spring. Look at that. You think they scored some runs for him? 13 <laughs> 2 earned run average. <laughs> but the last two were just nightmares for Jeff. So he gave up 31 hits in 15 innings, just four walks, 16 strikeouts. He was hit very hard, but he's had great success against the White Sox. Three and one in his career with an outstanding 2-1-4 earned run average. Coming into this season, he is 87 and 69 career with a very good 3.40 earned run average. Most of those wins coming as a member of the Montreal Expos, and this is his third year with the Seattle Mariners. Now we talk about the Mariner offense, but they've, they've got some guys that can really catch the ball. And we're talking with Lou Pinello before the game, Hawk. It looks like they've got a 50% turnover in players from what they had last year, and I think he really likes some of those young pitchers that they brought up. He's got some. We're going to see one in the last game of this three-game set. Freddie Garcia. He'll run it up there in 94, 95, 96 in his last outing in Las Vegas. The day before yesterday, he had 10 strikeouts. So he has great stuff. He pitches against the Sox, and our hitters were just awed by the fastball and the curveball. Yeah, they do have a lot of different people. 
But the Mariners, as we mentioned, with that 322 average and Sox with that 320 average with a lot of young players on both teams, now they've got to see if they can do it in double deck stadiums rather than those single deck stadiums <laughs> from spring training. I'll tell you what, this is still a pretty good ballpark they hit in. I'm sure that the Mariners can apply supply plenty of offense. Now you go to Comiskey Park with the air, especially early in the season, it's going to be cold, the wind blowing in. And that's where the Sox have got to be able to throw strikes from a pitching standpoint, keep the score down low, and use the speed and the creativity of Jerry Manuel to win ball games, especially early in the season. So Facero has concluded his warm-up tosses, and we are just about set to get underway for 1999 here at the Kingdom. 331 down the left field line, 389 in deep left center. 312 down the right field line, 380 in deep right center, and 405 dead away center field. So you mentioned the last opener here at the Kingdom. Ray Durham gets set to lead it off. Ray hit 297 on the spring last year, a 285 hitter. 19 homers, he knocked in 67. He had 36 stolen bases, 35 doubles, and eight triples. First pitch taken for a ball, and that will be tossed out by Joe Brinkman, home plate umpire, Daryl Cousins at first, Dale Scott at second, and John Shulock. Well, they made a switch here. Shulock's at first, and Cousins is at third. So another campaign starts for the Sox as there's a fastball foul straight back to even the count at one. Ray coming off just a terrific season and that man right there in the middle Jerry Manuel coming off a terrific rookie season as manager. He's a good one. He's a keeper. Davis even with the bag off the line at third. There's the breaking ball. Facero has to throw the ball inside as Wimpy mentioned earlier. If he does not, he keeps the ball out over the plate. He's probably going to get lit up. In his career, he has won 87 times. He has lost 69. One and one last year against the Sox and three and one lifetime. Fastball up. And we're going to be keeping an eye on the strike zone. Now we saw it at the outset of spring training. A few of the umpires were calling a higher strike. But after the first week or 10 days, it almost seemed like it went by the boards and they went right back to their strike zones. Everything was down and everything was small. Yeah. That's trouble. Hello. That's a base hit. That's down into the corner. Durham turns it on. Pinner now slips down Durham. Here he goes to third. He is there. Yes, the leadoff triple for Ray Durham. See, now that's a good way to start off a season. Well, Facero was ahead in the count one and two. You can see this belt high splitter, I believe it was. It just hung up over the strike zone, and Ray went out there just protecting, flips it over the first baseman's head, and utilizes that great speed of his. Now you see Buner falling down in right. Buner usually with that excellent throwing arm. We'll have to see how he throws now after elbow surgery. He's throwing good. So, well, Ray cruises in there easily. That'll bring up the 21-year-old shortstop. Mike Caruso hit 319 in the spring last year, a 306 hitter, five homers. He drove in 55. Looks at that fastball upstairs. Huge crowd in attendance, and that's the best way to get them settled down very quickly is yeah. start off with a triple. There's a strike to even the count at one. You know, somehow, though, I think this crowd's going to get riled up before the evening is over. Oh, I do, too. Yeah. There's a shot. Rodriguez has got it over to Segui. Durham scores and the Sox take a quick one to nothing lead. Nice job by Caruso. Infield was back. Go up the middle. That's situational hitting. Very good job right there. And that's what the Sox are going to have to do. Manufacture runs. Take advantage of the great speed of Durham and get him in. If he pulls that ball or hits it to the third or first baseman, that's the only way that that run is not going to score. Here's Big Frank. 
at 364 on the spring three homers he knocked in 15 takes ball one. Well the interesting thing about this lineup this year with the Sox certainly Frank with Albert Bell last year hitting behind him and this previous season Frank had his worst year in 98. He's going to have to take a lot of walks this year which he has always done in his career with the exception of last season. We saw him 0 2 1 2 probably more than we had in the past three or four years. Ouch. And a breaking ball foul down off the foot. And the count one and two. Well, even if Canerico, who is on deck, is swinging the bat great, even if Mags is swinging the bat great, whoever's going to hit behind Frank, when they get in big spots in the ball game, Wimpy, they're going to go right around him. No question about it. You got to make that unproven guy beat you. Now feel straight up for the big hurt. Checks it up. He did not go. And the count two and two. These two clubs met 11 times last year. The Mariners won seven. They played six times at the Kingdome, and Seattle won six. Ouch. Here's one of the best right there. Yeah, he's good. The Moose. Uh-uh. Full count. Like so far on that splitter hawk, he's only pitched to a couple of batters. Looks like he might be overthrowing it because there's not a whole lot of downward movement. Looks like it might be just a little bit too fast velocity-wise. He just missed it. Got out there a little too quick. Mabry, former Cardinal, comes in, makes the catch, and it's out number two. Frank a little hot at himself. And right now, let's show you our picks to click for opening day. Phil Moore, Skip Ellison, our director, went with Durham. Susan Evans, our producer, went with Mags. Wimperu went with the Big Hurt, Frank Thomas. Casey and I are going to go with Darren Jackson. Here's Canerco. Hit 365 on the spring. Four homers. Drove in 19. Coming over from the Reds in the Mike Cameron deal. One and one to count. Paul just 23 years old. Twice was the Dodgers minor league player of the year once the minor league player of the year period. And if you watch him throughout the course. Well, I should say the start of the season here. You'll find out he keeps his hands back very well very seldom. We saw a few more towards the end of the spring training has a check swing has a good idea of the strike zone. Sets up nice at the plate. Ooh. Two balls two strikes two out. Well that was a good pitch to hit on two and one. Breaking pitch just hung up their belt high. Ball rip foul. Yeah. Good play. All right. <laughs> she. She looked like she knew what she was doing there. Darn right. A little rug burn there, though. Yeah. Knee pads. Yeah. Oh, the 36 year old South part of Springfield Illinois splitter down low Canerco strikes out but the Sox get on the board here in the opening frame of 1999 and after a half inning of play it's a good guys one and the Mariners coming up. One nothing Sox here in the bottom of the first inning and rookie second baseman Carlos Guillen will lead it off. Carlos coming over in that trade with Houston for Randy Johnson hit 393 in the spring a homer. And he drove in 20. An outstanding effort by the youngster. And the Mariners think this young man has a chance in a couple of years to become a perennial all star at second base. James Baldwin making his first opening day start. 
James last year 13 and 6 with a 5.32 ERA but he finished up very strong in the second half 10 and 3 and a 3.68 ERA. DN61 180 pounds out of Maracay, Venezuela. 3 and 1 to count. Here are the numbers on James this spring. 2 and 1. Six starts. That's high into right center field. Darren Jackson making the call. Still a lot of haze and smoke out there from the fireworks. And that's out number one. And here's the rest of their lineup. Batting second. It's A Rod. Ed Griffey Jr. is in the third spot in center field. The middle third of the lineup has DH, Edgar Martinez, David Segui at first base, and Jay Buhner in right. Bottom third of John Mayberry in left field. Russ Davis at third, and Dan Wilson behind the plate. Here's the brilliant shortstop, just 23 years old, Alex Rodriguez. 394 on the spring, five homers. He knocked in 17 last year. Broke the American League record for home runs by a shortstop. He had 42. He drove in 124 runs. He had 310 and he stole 46 bases. Yeah, but what have you done for us lately? <laughs> Breaking ball misses and you count two and one. Alex has faced James 12 times in his career. He has three hits. Two of them stayed in the park. In the hole. Look at the play by Norton. The gun over the first year. Norton, Norton you're, you're the greatest. greatest. Wow. <laughs> what a terrific play on a tough hop. A lot of topspin on this shot off the bat of Alex Rodriguez. You can see, look at Norton. That ball's already behind him. He gets up just to his knees, making a very accurate throw. He has worked real hard on his defense. Beautiful play by Norton. And now the Sox are going to put the shift on for Junior. Griffey hit 288 in the spring, six homers, drove in 18 last year, 56 homers, and knocked in 146. You just try to trick him a little bit. One and one to count. Here's the Sox on defense. Abbott, Jackson, Ordonez in the outfield. Norton, Caruso, Durham, and Thomas in the infield. Fordyce and Baldwin, the battery. James last year, no decision against Seattle. One and zero lifetime. As the count moves to three and one. One back hitter. There's Edgar. Junior two for nine lifetime against Baldwin. And there's ball four. So as Edgar Martinez steps up, let's pause for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. Along with the Wet Brew, Tom Petrie, Ken Harrelson from the Kingdom in beautiful Seattle. Here's a good curveball to Martinez. Edgar, 36 year old veteran, 333 on the spring. That's what he did last year. 322, 29 long ones, and he ducked in 102. Edgar's one for 11 lifetime against Baldwin, but that one hit left the premises. And well, Gian is retired on the fly ball. Beautiful play by Norton to throw out Rodriguez. The walk to Griffey. Good rip. One of the smarter hitters in all of baseball. And a model of consistency, too, Hawk. He's a 318 lifetime. He's won batting titles, and he doesn't run a lick, he hits it all. Well, last year, with that speed of his, 
picked up 46 doubles. And he has no speed. Yeah. Well, we didn't line drives in the gaps. That's right. <laughs> Real hard. Just an extra base hitting machine. Yeah. I was watching him. Remember, he used to have that heel off the ground, that front foot. In batting practice today, he's got it on the ground right now. Junior Fakes does not go. Nice pick right there by Foot Fordyce. Well, in doubles, last four years, Andrew has had 52, 52, 35, and 46. Oh, yeah. Home runs, he has had 29, 26, 28, and 29. RBIs 113, 103, 108, 102. Oh, yeah, how many triples does he have? He's got one or two. He's had four. Uh-oh. Oh, Good man. foul. It will. Right side. Wrong shape. That was a good pitch by Baldwin. Not a whole lot that Martinez could do if he had kept that ball fair. But Edgar, boy, I'll tell you what, was he ever quick. He led with that left four, that left elbow that you talk about. Third, that front side. And then just couldn't keep it fair. Well, you don't have to be fast of speed to have fast hips, and that's why he is such a great hitter. His hips are exceptionally fast. That's popped up right side. Stay in here. Mag's giving chase, and he will run out of room. Well, you know, he has shown us to be an excellent hitter up and down, in and out, hard, slow, breaking stuff, anything. You know, if he's on, he's going to hit you hard. Well, his hitting zone probably was second in this league when we had another guy who was playing, the great Kirby Puck. Yes. Kirby had, without question, the biggest hitting zone in all of baseball. By the way, I had a chance to see Kirby in Las Vegas, spent a little time, and Kirby looks great. Great. Watch out. Watch out. Oh, my. Paper absorbed a lot of that shock. Yeah, he said he's all right. Two out. And the 2-2 pitch. There's a broken bat flare in the right field. That'll fall. Well, Junior pulls up at second. Two on. Two down. And that'll bring up David Segui. Zagi, a 306 hitter in the spring. Last year hit 305 for Seattle. 19 homers, knocked in 84. Up, hauls it in, and that'll retire the side. Nothing across after one. Sox lead it one zip. <laughs> 27-year-old right-hander James Baldwin making his first ever opening day start. Ran 23 pitches up to the plate in the bottom of the first, but he leads it one nothing. So just tuning in, lead off triple by Ray Durham. Mike Caruso, a nice piece of hitting with a hard ground ball back through the middle that Rodriguez got to, threw him out, but Durham scored. Here's Mags. Look at those spring numbers. 282 hitter last year, 14 homers, drove in 65. What a spring this young man had. That ball hit hard right at Jay Bird. He's Man. there. That's a hang with him. He never moved, did he? Take one little step and then yeah. that was all that was needed.
So here's the third baseman, Greg Norton. Greg at 375 on the spring, three homers, drove in 11. Last year, nine homers and knocked in 36. Chopper, Russ Davis, two hoppers. Is that a mock cheer for Russ Davis right there because he made the play? Well, he has improved. Talking to Pinella before the game, said he had a good spring defensively. Now, yeah. one game against the Sox, he made two errors in the first three innings. But he said he was very satisfied with the way they gave him some agility drills that he worked very hard on, you know, with the tires and the ropes and the skipping rope and all that. Uh huh. And his footwork. I still think he's more or less a stand up third baseman, and I've never seen a real good stand up third baseman. You can see how high he is. He doesn't get his yeah. behind down. And when you don't get your behind down, you're going to lose the angle. And if the ball takes any kind of a bad hop whatsoever, you got no chance. Those great third basemen can handle those bad hops. So when I say the bad ones, I'm talking about the ones that hit go off the heel of your glove or off to the side. They still can make those plays. It's Jeff Abbott. Very quickly, nothing in two. That's what he did last year. 279, 12, and 41. Off the end of the bat, there's the three hopper underneath. The one, two, three inning for Facero is retired six in a row, but after an inning and a half, he trails it one nothing. Jay Buhner will lead off the Mariner second. It'll be Buhner, Mabry, and Davis to face James Baldwin. And a nice round of applause for the return of Buhner. They mentioned had severe elbow surgery seven months ago. Last year, hit 15 homers, knocked in 45 for the Mariners. And watching him take Good. batting practice, he hit some landmarkers out of here. Yeah, he did, Hawk. It certainly looks like from a hitting standpoint, that elbow doesn't bother him a bit. You know, I thought it was great, too, that when he was introduced, he, walked, he ran over to the trainers, Rick Griffin and Tom Newberg, gave him a big hug. Because I'm sure that he really appreciates all the help that they gave him in rehabilitation. You sure? Yeah, that's I, that's my guess. Breaking ball low and the count one and two. You know, being sensitive myself. <laughs> they are. That was Rick Griffin right there. The ball hit hard in the center field. Jackson, he's back there. He's a good one. He makes the catch and that's out number one. And a reminder, this weekend, when the Kansas City Royals come to town, a reminder, Friday the 9th, it'll be our home opener, so make your plans to be out there. It'll be White Sox static sticker schedules from Coca-Cola this weekend. All fans will get them. So just dial 312 Sox. That's the first home series, the Sox and the Royals. Call 312 Sox. John Mabry. 28-year-old outfielder, first baseman. Well, it was a nice play by DJ. Jackson went exactly, turned his head down, went exactly where the ball was coming down and made that easy play. Norton sucks it up. Over to the big hurt. Two gone. Boy, these guys really got themselves some kind of good-looking lineup. Offensively. Whew. Russ Davis, the eighth place hitter, comes up. He had 362 in the spring, nine homers, drove in 20. Those nine homers were tops for the American League. Woo. Last year hit 20 homers and knocked in 82. That ball into the gap. Nobody's going to get that one. DJ tripped momentarily. One hop off the fence. So Davis, who hit 30 doubles last year, starts off the season with a two-bagger. Well, Darren Jackson was playing him way over in right center field, so he really had no chance to get over to left center to get that. Ball wasn't creamed, but it was certainly in the right spot. It looked, you know, it looks like Davis 
has made a couple adjustments. He's got a little bit more bend in his knees because you talk about him being a straight-up third baseman. Well, he was pretty much a straight-up hitter last year, too. And he had a lot of times, a lot of trouble at times with breaking balls because it didn't appear that he was picking it up out of the pitcher's hand. Here's Dan Wilson. He had 340 this spring, a couple of homers, knocked in 13 last year, 252, nine homers, and drove in 44. Takes a curveball strike. Wilson has faced Baldwin six times, has three hits, one homer. Once again, a big gap out there in left center. That's popped up left side. Abbott broke back, Caruso going out. Now Abbott comes on, calls off Mike, makes a catch. And that'll retire the side. We'll go to the third. Good guys on top. One nothing. Our Southwest Airlines tail of the tape. If you're just tuning in, a leadoff triple by Ray Durham. Caruso knocked him in with a hard ground ball to Rodriguez. And here is Darren Jackson. It'll be Jackson, Fordyce, and Durham. Ball hit hard. Picked nicely by Alex. He's good. Well, he's a great ambassador for the game as well. He signs autographs. He has pictures taken with a lot of people. He's almost what you would call the ideal player. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Fordyce. Tommy Hawk bullet into center field. Well, Fordyce with 308, three homers, knocked in five for the Sox in his first official at bat. In that good looking uniform and drills one. That's a great start. I'll tell you what, with Pizarro, you got to get him first. He's going to throw you that first pitch fastball out over the plate. You got to get it. Because once he gets a strike one and establishes it, then he throws the fastball inside, and he's got the splitter that'll get your way out in front. Here's Ray, that triple, as you see. Fakes the bunt, takes the ball, and a reminder for groups of 20 or more fans, they will receive excellent discounts and personalized service from a White Sox sales representative. That's group outings at Comiskey Park. So for details, just dial 312 674 1000. Get yourself a group. Come on out. Visit the Bertucci boys. You can even visit Don Esposito if you want to. He'll talk to you. Yeah. What job? Home opener Friday. Three o'clock. I love home openers. They're fun, aren't they? We we'll get some nice weather. A lot of folks coming out. Kansas City Royals, who had a great spring. The opponent. Fordyce, just a decent lead over there. The Royals, in their home opener today, got beat by the Red Sox 5 to 3. LP. Larry Parrish got his Tigers. Boy, they finished up pretty strong this spring. They were playing some good baseball, talking to some scouts that had been in Florida, then came out to Arizona. They beat Texas 11 to 5. Long set by Facero. There's a the strike. Other action around the American League in the other two games showed Baltimore over Tampa Bay 10 to 7 at Camden Yards. And in the bottom of the second at the Coliseum in Oakland, Yankees leading the Athletics 1 0. One out. And the 1-1, one, one, no. Checking some scores over in the National League. Only game in action. Bottom of the sixth inning in St. Louis. Brewers leading the Cardinals 7-2. Some finals. Montreal beat Pittsburgh 4-2. Oh, what a game. The Dodgers and the D-backs. Oh. In the opener. Raul Mondesi did some damage. Hard hit. Carlos Guillen turns wow. it very easily. 
Around the horn, double play. We'll go to the bottom of the third. One nothing, good guys. That's the story here. Bottom of the third inning. 1 2 0 for the Sox, 0 2 0 for the Mariners. It'll be the top of the order. Carlos Guilla, Alex Rodriguez, and Ken Griffey Jr. to face James Baldwin. So that trade, that very, very controversial trade last year, Randy Johnson going to Houston, turned out to be a bonanza, so to speak, for the Mariners. Johnson, of course, now with the D backs. Carlos Guillen, the starting second baseman. Freddie Garcia, one of the starting pitchers. And Halimo, left handed reliever. They're all on this ball club. And Houston had nothing. That's right. But you can't blame Houston. They made the right move trying to get themselves a world championship. And sometimes it's the following year or the year after it might look bad, but they did the right thing at the right time. One and two the count. And Johnson pitched great for Houston last year. Yeah, he did. We understand they offered him a lot of money and they weren't even in the ballpark. Yeah, go figure, especially in the Astrodome. Great place to pitch, too. Wow. What job? Now, field swung well around to the left. Huge gap in right center. Good fastball upstairs. And a reminder, the official website of the Chicago White Sox is www.shysox.com. Your source for White Sox information on players, latest news, tickets, upcoming games, promotions, and much, much more. That's www.shysox.com. Curveball tried to back door and missed, and the count goes full. Ball hit deep to right. Ardonia's back. Looks up. You can put it on the board. Carlos Guilla. A homer. And this game is tied at one. Baldwin had him 0-2. Went 3-2. And he burned it. Well, Guillen just got back in the count. He got back to that favorable hitter situation at 3-2. Looked for the fastball. Got it. And hit it out of here. Well, you know the fastball is coming when you got Rodriguez and Griffey coming up after you. It's a great place to hit. Is leading off for the Seattle Mariners. See how he gets that head of the bat out front. Knows the fastball is going to be there. It's a terrific place. It's probably the second best place to hit in baseball. What? In front of Griffey is first? No. There's a chopper. Norton's got it. Low throw, good wow. scoop, good pick by the big hurt. No, the best place I think to hit in baseball. J.D. Drew's got it. A left-handed hitter hitting in front of Mark McGuire. That's good. Wow, look at this. That's a tough pick for Frank. That hurts me watching Frank do that. Lord have mercy. Here's Junior. He walked in the first inning. Now, when you got a switch hitting leadoff man like Carlos Guillen, and as you mentioned, hitting in front of A. Rod and Junior, he's got a chance to have a good year. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Two on Seattle. So good. It's almost effortless when he hits a homer. Side view, he got a fastball up and out over the plate. You can't do that. Junior's going to hit it hard someplace. Way out of here. 
Here's Edgar. That little duck snort in the right field his first trip. 351 career homers. And he's 29 years old. There's the strike. Another one in the count one and two. 350. Well, I told you, Webby, you know how I feel about it. He's the best ball player I've ever seen in my career. There's a chopper, and that's going foul. And the funny thing about it is, you say that in one breath, and then they've got a shortstop out there. It's got a chance to, when he's done, to be a better ball player than Junior. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Wow, there they are, side by side. Well, Junior is the fourth quickest to reach 250 homers, as there's a shot foul. Junior was the second quickest to reach 300 behind Jimmy Fox. Fox was 27. Junior was 28. And Junior is the youngest player in history to reach 350 homers ahead of Jimmy Fox, Eddie Matthews, Mickey Mantle, Mellon, Hank Aaron, Frank Robinson, and Harmon Killebrew. If the Mariners, if Junior, who wants to win a world championship so bad, if the Mariners were to fall out of this race and it appeared that they would not have a chance to win it, I think you, no disrespect to Mark McGuire and our Sammy Sosa, but if he wanted to do it and go after it, I think he could take the 70 down. Man. Hank Aaron. Yep. Throughout the first pitch, if you're just tuning in, that's in the center field right at DJ. He's there. And that's out number two. One game they tried me at third base in spring training. We were playing the Braves. Alvin Dark says you can do it because one of our third basemen got hurt. I said, right. sure I can do it. Well, first inning we were playing. We were the home team. Henry was hitting third, came up, hit a rocket, scared me to death, hit me right in the fanny. I did have time to turn around. Good for you. <laughs> I feel like, uh oh. Get, Get foul. foul. Nope. Fair ball. Mike's got a shot at him now. Segui will pull up very wisely. Nice job by Ordonez. Played the carom, and he's got a good arm. Yeah, Segui's a dead duck at second base. I'll tell you, this, it, it just doesn't get very easy. You make a pitch down and out over the plate right here. Segui hooks it into that corner. The carom, and Mags is right there to make a good stop. Very wisely, Segui holds up. Here's Jay Buhner. He had a bullet. Darren Jackson in center field. Well, you look at this Mariner offense. They've got some good breaking ball hitters. They've got some outstanding fastball hitters. They have tremendous balance. Starting pitching standpoint, you go out there against this lineup, and you better have all your stuff together. Breaking pitch. Wow, 60 pitches already, 40 of which have been strikes. Well, that's one of the spinoffs of pitching against a balanced attack like this. I've always maintained you get a pitch against a club like this, you better get beat in a hurry if you're going to get beat. Because you better go right at him. Here comes Norton on the move. Over to Frank, and that'll do it. A couple of home runs, one by Carlos Key in his first major league shot. Ken Griffey Jr. Go to the fourth, 2 1, bad guy.
On the right of your screen, rookie Carlos Guillen's first Major League homer last inning, and Ken Griffey Jr.'s 351st career homer. Put the Mariners on top, two to one. For the Sox here in the top of the fourth, it'll be Caruso, Thomas, and Canerco. Might go for one, but did a good job. Lead off triple by Durham in the first. And boy, he hit a bullet back through the middle that Alex Rodriguez picked up, was playing back, threw him out, and Durham scored. Breaking ball strike. Fastball high. Mike last year led the American League with 44 infield hits. Well, you get 44 infield hits. That's like adding 88 points on your average. That's good. There's a shot Get through there. That's a base hit. So great speed aboard. Anyway, Mikey, I'll tell you, he hangs in there as well as any lefty against lefty situation. We've seen him against Randy Johnson. Didn't flinch. Nah. Well, he's one of the toughest guys on this ball club. He and Ray Durham. Well, Caruso led the Sox in spring training with six stolen bases. The Sox fans know last year had 22 on the season. Big Frank just missed one popped up to John Mabry in left field. Career and opening day, Frank at 387. That's good with a couple homers and six runs batted in. You know, one thing about Pacero, when runners get on base, he really shuts it down. We saw him do that last year and the previous year as well. Yeah, he works very quickly with nobody on, so he's working at two different paces, which is very difficult to do. Yeah. Be like a hitter going to the plate. One at bat trying to hit everything to right field. The next at bat trying to pull everything. Yeah, and right there, what he's doing is getting his fielders on their heels. Not on opening day. You don't think so? <laughs> no, not on opening day. Well, <laughs> it'll make him start thinking no. about something else. What was your? Did you have? A, very memorable experience on opening day. No. No. I never played. That's up high. So the count one and oh. Actually, let me think. Well, that's a great rush though, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's great. Really fun to be in the opening day lineup. That only happened a couple of times. Well, you wish you could feel that way every game. Wouldn't it be great? Yeah. Well, some guys did. That's a good fastball. So the count evens at one. Joe Brinkman behind the plate. John Shulock at first. Dale Scott at second. Daryl Cousins over third, the men in blue. There's the shot. Face hit. He and almost got it. Caruso. Rounding second. Here's Junior with that gun. Not in time. The speed of Caruso. Sox. Nobody out. Runners at the corners. Boy, Frank just hammered this one right back up the middle. Gian with a nice effort. About a helmet high the whole way. Tries to turn this one over. Splitter, not a bad pitch. Just didn't quite get it out there far enough. And Caruso very aggressive. Junior rushes this throw. There really, really doesn't get a whole lot on it. Yeah, Mike Caruso is not afraid to run those pillows. No, sometimes you got to throw a lasso on him, which is good. You yeah. really have to gear him down and try to gear him up. Here's Paul Canerico. 
Takes the off speed pitch for a strike. Well, it was very Went down his first trip. Excuse me, Hawk, but it was very apparent that Caruso knew where Griffey was playing before, prior to the Frank hitting that ball up there. So he knew he had a shot at going to third base because Junior had to move towards right center. Well, that's something that Sox have been working on all spring, which every club should work on every spring and all through during the season. You better know where those outfielders are. If you don't, shame on you and shame on the coaches. That's the last thing you have to do as a base runner. As you look at Joe Nasik, bench coach for the Sox, they work very hard on this, knowing where the outfielders are. You've got nothing else to do on the base path. That's right. Know the outs and know where those outfielders are. And the situation, of course. Every pitch you get to do it because outfielders will move on the count. Good ones. And there's certain outfielders that you catch them, you know, working on their stance. You, <laughs> Vanilla, you, me. There's three of us right here. <laughs> Wearing out that grass, not killing that grass. With man. backs to the home plate. <laughs> Cruz with third, Thomas at first. Nobody out the 2 1 pitch. Ooh. Oh, he got a hanger right there. Pops it up. He can Gian. score. Long way. Cannot make the play. Well, I sort of wish he had caught that one. Yeah. Caruso's going to score on that. Easy. Dinner had no chance to get over there. And while we have a moment, let's check out tonight's Aflac trivia question. Edgar Martinez has a career 424. That's not bad. On base percentage. Name the only active player with a better percentage. I won't say he's playing in this game tonight. Me too. Just knowing the way that Susan Evans wants to start things off with a home flavor. Yeah. The 2 2. There's a shot. One hopper. They're going to turn it, but Caruso scores, and that ties the game at two. Ball hit hard by Canerco. Yeah, Paul does not get an RBI, even though he did a great job of hitting on a 2-2 pitch, going the opposite way, but Guillen was right there. Frank had to hold up to see if that ball was going to be caught in the air. It was not. So Caruso scores, and we are tied at two. Good piece of hitting back in Erico. That's all you can do. Hit it hard. It just happened. A nice play by Guillen. That ball was scalded. Here's Mags. He scalded one right to Jay Buner in right field. Looks at that pitch nicely down low. Started off this spring swinging the bat well and just got better as it went along. Maybe you mentioned in some of our telecasts down there that he was really making some adjustments. And it looks like, you know, when you can start making adjustments pitch to pitch is when you really have a chance to become a good major league hitter. No question about it. You know, you could see that Mags doing it last year, moving around the batter's box, switching, trying to get a better look at, at different pitchers. And he's going to parlay that into a very successful career. There's a bullet. Wow. Two and two the count. Two runs, four hits, no errors for the Sox. Two runs, five hits, no errors for Seattle. And right now with two strikes, I'm sure Mag's going to hunker down and try and hit something up the middle or the opposite field. Well, you know, when you're talking about real good prospects in AAA and AA, that ball popped up. We'll get back to that when we return. Juniors, that's the wrong man. He'll make that play. That'll retire the side. Sox tied up after three and a half. Two two. John Mabry leads off the bottom of the fourth inning in this two two tie. It'll be Mabry, Davis, and Wilson to face James Baldwin. That's foul. Maybe grounded out to Greg Norton. But we were talking about Ordonia's last inning making adjustments at the plate. And when you see good prospects at the AAA and AA level, 
who are real good physically. The only difference in them getting to the big leagues or not is going to be how well they handle it mentally because those adjustments are made right between the ears. As Durham is there. One out. And right now let's check out our athletic trivia question and answer. Edgar Martinez has a career 424 on base percentage. Name the only active player with a better percentage. And his name is the Big Hurt. That's awesome there. 443. Yeah. What was yours? Michael? About a point or two higher than my batting average. <laughs> Russ can't, Davis can't get it. It can't be lower, right? No, I don't think Good. so. Good. Okay. That's about it. About 216, I think. Yeah, but that was a hard oh, 216. Tell man. me about it. Couldn't catch a break. Davis double in the left center. It's more of a positioning type thing. Sox were playing him hit into right center. Well, Big Mac has done it. He is homered in St. Louis. But Milwaukee leads that ball game seven to two, bottom of the seventh. Thinking it 162 this year? Nah. Breaking ball. Jamie Moyer, left-hander, will start tomorrow night against Jim Parquet. Then on Wednesday, with John Snyder against the good-looking, hard-throwing right-hander coming over from Houston in that Randy Johnson deal, Freddie Garcia, who just burned it up his last three starts. He's had 10 strikeouts the other night. Ooh, Davis is gone. He'll grab some bench, and that's out number two. First strikeout for James. Looks like he cut a fastball right there. A little late movement. And Davis pulled up off that pitch just a hair. Here's the catcher, Danny Wilson. And a reminder, opening day this Friday at 3 o'clock. Comiskey Park, Sox versus the Kansas City Royals. Individual game tickets are on sale now at the Comiskey Park box office. Ticketmaster ticket centers are by dialing 312-831-1-SOX or online at Ticketmaster.com. It's this Friday, 3 o'clock, Comiskey Park, Sox in their home opener. Ooh. The ball is strike two out here in the bottom of the fourth. Ground ball, Caruso can't get there. That one got, came off Mike's heel of his glove. He was there. He is so quick. Sometimes, I'll tell you what, those take, they will take little funny hops on the artificial surface. That's what that one did. Came up on him a little bit. So here's Carlos Guillen. Fly to center and Homer. Leading off last inning. Out of Maracay, Venezuela. Well, he sets up nice at home plate. He's a good-looking player. Yeah. Ball hammered down into the Sox pen. Nice kick save right there. By Keith Folk. Outfield. Around to the left. Off speed pitch. So JB on top one and two. Yeah. This young man right here, Carlos Guillen, is sitting in a great spot to have a big rookie season. Look where he's standing, a little bit closer up front in the batter's box, too. So he wants to be on that fastball. Two and two the count. 
I think most guys want to stand on that back line. A little ding toe. Yeah, oh, I love it. Yeah. Uh -oh. He'll grab some bench and that'll retire the side. We'll go to the fifth, tied at two. Safeco Field opening up just next door. And the countdown, 101 days. Retractable dome, seat 47,000. They're going to cap off the season tickets at 24,000 to allow a lot of game day tickets to be sold. Mm -hmm. And they have moved in. Remember when we talked about, some of you may recall, we talked about the dimensions of the field. As Greg Norton will lead it off in this 2 2 tie last year, I mean, they were humongous. Well, as we figured, they have been brought in. It was what, 4 by 420 to left center? Yeah. At now going to be 390. Right. That's still a good shot. Yeah. But they are much smaller than originally drawn up in the plans. Ooh, good pitch right there. Down and in. That's a pitch you cannot allow Facero to throw to the right handed hitter. You know, slider coming down and then that splitter down and then you got some problems. Yeah, and he could turn that splitter over a bit too. Kind of a screwball action. Ooh, we understand that Junior was very, very vocal about it and was Alex Rodriguez. And we understand Alex became even more vocal than Junior about getting those fences in to where they were decent. Yeah, 420 is awfully it's big. Ridiculous. And, and you know, too, Huck. You wonder when an open air stadium most they're going to try and play most of the games naturally with uh, with no covering but there's heavy air here in Seattle. I don't know. Did you ever play in this area. I played in six stadium. Yeah. OK. When they first came out here. I'll tell you what. Even that was a band box though. So that was no indication. Oh, OK. Checks it up. Takes ball four. All six stadium. Never been there. Now, did you, did you play in Tacoma at Cheney Stadium? Yeah. Cheney Field. Yeah. Played there. Ball didn't carry well there. Oh, you had to rip it to get it out. Yeah. There. Well, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. Here's Jeff Abbott. Well, let's just say that it certainly is not going to be a home run haven as compared to this one. No. Now, I feel slightly to the left. Pretty good rip right there. Cut it just a little bit short. The count nothing in one. Have it a long look down at one of last year's MVPs on the Sox. Wallace Johnson at third. First part of the year he was the MVP. Yeah. He was. <laughs> but what a job he did. I mean you. you there are some guys who have done as good a job at third base, but I don't think anybody's ever done a better job than he had in his rookie season coaching third. Well, he works really hard at it. You know, he knows where every outfielder is playing. He surveys the situation. Knows their arm strength. Yeah, he's right there. Well, it's a very quiet individual. Sarah once again really shutting it down as that pitch up and in. Count evens at one. Two runs, four hits, no errors for the good guys. Two runs, six hits, no errors for the Mariners. If you're just tuning in. Sox with a run in the first, one in the fourth. Saddle two home runs in the third, one by Carlos Guillen and Ken Griffey Jr. Norton decently. He takes off. That ball hit hard and whoa. That was close. Daryl Cousins right on top of the line had the best view of anybody. And there you see Jerry Manuel's strategy. Norton, not with great speed, but he trusts the bat of Jeff Abbott to put in play. And that was almost an RBI double. A 
lot of hitting and running a lot of stealing. A lot of movement on the base paths this year for the Sox. Trying to create. And manufacture. Yeah that's what the Sox have really got to do this year when the pit and run is called for you at least got to hit the ball down on the ground. Runner at second base nobody out you got to get him to third for the next guy he gets to third you got to drive him home hit the ball in the air or whatever it takes to score the run. The Sox primarily a right handed dominated hitting that's one reason that Jeff Lieber had a tremendous spring and Chris Angleton left handed hitters are on this ball club as he made a good pitch on him and that's out number one. He missed his pitch just a moment ago and this time for Cyril got his pitch that splitter down and in or down straight downer out of the strike zone that's where that pitch works the best with two strikes. It wouldn't surprise me to see another little action right here on the base pass with Darren Jackson standing in grounded out the shortstop his first trip but DJ had a very fine spring at 389. Well, Darren, too, another one of those guys standing up in front of the plate. I think with a guy like Facero, when you got a, a splitter, tough to wait back and try and get that thing. I, I like two moving schools up. of thought. Yeah, that's one school of thought. The other one is get even further back as back as far as you can, so that when it comes across, it's not it's prone to swing at it. And the reason a lot of guys will stand back further is because of the fact if it is a strike then it means it's going to be high enough to take a hack at. Yeah, either way if, either way whatever your particular style is. Yeah but if you're in a lousy mode where you're jumping at the ball and you're way back in the thing you got no chance to hit that thing because you're going to swing at it in the dirt. I know. Well is there any other mode to be in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it way up in front. Make them throw you that fastball. Because we have found out that pitchers really aren't the smartest guys in the world. You have? Yeah. What led you to that you conclusion? Can... <laughs> well, you talk to them now. <laughs> Some of the pitches they throw during the course of the season, you got to kind of wonder. Yeah, especially when they shake <laughs> shake it off two or three times and then come with a, a hanging straight change. Yeah, or their worst pitch. <laughs> yeah. The fourth one, the third yeah, one. Fourth best pitch, you know, in a situation where they got to get the guy out. There's Big Stanley. Stan Williams. Boy, that's a big man. One Whoa. time, probably the hardest sore in all of baseball and probably the meanest pitcher in baseball. That's a great combination, isn't it? Yeah. There goes Norton. Hit and run on once again. Jerry Manuel is not going to acquiesce right here. He's going to be doing this all season long. Well, he knows he's got a lot of contact hitters in the lineup. One through nine. I love it. And there's going to be games where they're going to be shooting ducks down there at second base. Remember that one game, Lance Parrish? Anaheim. The Anaheim. Gosh. We won that ball game. Yeah. Came back and kept running. One and one the count with one out. That ball oh, yeah. hit deep to left center field. Get up. Lavery goes back, looks up. You can put it on the ball. Yeah. Yes. Two run shot by Darren Jackson, and it's a 4 2 good guy lead. The Hawkeroos pick the click. I'll tell you, Darren creamed the ball his first time up. Alex Rodriguez made a real nice play on him. And we talk about DJ. We've talked about him in the past being a good high ball hitter. He got one upstairs. And there it is. A hanging splitter or slider right there. Cream me, cream me. And he did. Out of here. Here's Brooke Fordyce. He hammered a shot single in the center field in his first official. That bat in a Sox uniform. Boy, Facero's either throwing a great breaking ball down in the dirt or hanging him. Hello. A bullet in the left, right at Maybury. Jeez. So before Ray Durham takes his third trip to the plate, let's pause for station identification.
This is America's number one sports station, WGN Chicago. Along with Tom Petroy, Ken Harrelson from the Kingdom, opening day 1999. Aaron Jack, actually, that was my son Casey. His pick to click, he wanted me to take DJ. Casey watching the game down in Tucson with his roommate, Chris DeMar uh, Delgado. Casey tearing it up down there. He's going through that mechanical mode right now. There's a line shot face in the right field. Yeah, he started off real good. Now he's starting to think too much. Oh, he's hurting the team then, huh? That's part of the process, yeah. though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The young players. With 8 for 12, and all of a sudden he started thinking about this and that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to get a little better. I think yeah, I'll right. 9 for my next 12. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it just doesn't work that no. way, does it? He'll be all right. Here's Mike Caruso. Drove in a run. Hard hit grounder to Rodriguez's first trip. Then singled and scored. Last inning. Breaking ball strike. Good pitch from Cicero. Boy, it's just tough as you were mentioning a while ago, though, Wimpy. It's just tough. Of the guy who works as quick as Cicero does in the windup, all of a sudden shut it down to this degree with men on base. Yeah. Two entirely different tempos. Out in front of that one pops it up in the right field. Buehner is there. And that'll do it for the two run homer by Darren Jackson. Halfway home for two socks. On tonight's Discover Card Platinum Payback Playback, we go back 25 years. Here's the pitch by Downing. Swinging. Henry Aaron, that was homer number 715, 25 years ago. That's amazing. And I was there, sitting right in that third base dugout, trying to get his bat. Mel, the key to that whole little piece right there was who caught the ball? Tommy the House. Left-handed reliever. Yeah. Tommy House, who's yep. a very good pitching coach. And Buck tried to get that ball. I think he tried to... He would have sold up, it. Up. He would have sold it right on the spot, <laughs> Billy Buck. <laughs> Here's Alex. Four two socks. Takes the strike. And the count one and two. Alex was robbed of extra bases on a beautiful play by Norton at third. And then he grounded out to Greg once again. There you see the emblem. Watching some of that Braves game today, I believe they have that emblem on their sleeve. Ah. Ground ball. Norton's going to get him again. Well, right there you see Alex Rodriguez turning that top hand over and hitting that ground ball the third. Three consecutive times. Now, when he's hot, well, tell you, that pitch away, he is just rifling it into... Right center to left center. Here's Junior. He has walked and he is homer. Turned a ball and fastball around in a heartbeat. JB coming right at him. There you see the most opening day home runs. Mike Robinson. Junior, Eddie Matthews, May. <laughs> yes, look at the Yazaroo. Those guys were all good, weren't they? I believe there's only been one guy to do it three times opening day George Bell against Kansas yeah. City. You remember when we used to have Griffey's number? I mean, oh yeah, ate him a couple up. years ago. Ate him up. Inside, inside, deep, deep and deeper. Deep, deep and deeper. Well, last year Junior kind of turned that around. Yeah, he did. Now, he hit 395 against the Sox with four homers, 11 RBIs, and 43 at bats. Ooh. Breaking ball. He's gone. He'll grab a little bench. And that's out number two. 
Great pitch by JB. There's that hook we talk about. Well, the bottom falls out. The key for Baldwin is to get to the situation where he can use this pitch as his strikeout. Man, the great Ken Griffey goes down. He did not pick up the tight rotation. Edgar takes strike one. He is singled and fly to center. Now Junior is such a, just a great athlete. You ever seen him swing the golf club? I've seen him on television. He got a chance to be a heck of a player. That's in foul territory. Durham yeah, now calling him off. <laughs> Right where he should be. A one, two, three inning for ball, and we'll go to the six. It's still the Sox by two. Oh, there's a beautiful little guy. Looks like Wimpy after he's had a couple of beers. <laughs> Bobbing around. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Thomas will lead it off against Jeff Facero. Big strike one. Four, six, and oh for the Sox. 2 6 and 0 for Seattle. Big hurt, one for two. Get in He's there. He's two for three. As it one hops over the fence, ground rule double. Another rocket. Yeah, Frank got one up and out over the plate. Well, he looked terrific in spring training. Carrying it over into the season. Frank Thomas looks like he's in great shape. All right, Webby. Now, here's the situation you were talking about earlier what the Sox are going to have to do. They're going to have to communicate with each other and they're going to have to then execute. Right. We just don't have the firepower when you're talking in terms of numbers of home run. They broke their club record last year hitting 198. But you get in situations like this. Now, the only guy that I can see on this ball club that you don't want to be going to right field would be the big hurt. Big Frank, without a doubt. And even though Canerco is in that cleanup spot, he hasn't proven, you know, that he that he's one of the guys that that you can entrust with not having to go the opposite way. No, and he's got a good stroke the other way. We saw it in his last time up. Hit a shot yeah. at the second baseman. That split her down low. That evens accounted one. Yeah, well, that was a good at bat he had, even though he hit in that 4 6 3 double play. I mean, he scalded that ball. Good play by Guillen. He had a man on first and third, nobody out. So when you do this, that's situational hitting. You want to go back to the middle. Now, in this particular case, you got to go to the right side, obviously, to try to get Big Hurt over to third. Right. Not necessarily just get him over, take a weak little swing, but hit a base, hit the right field, score him. Why not be a hero? It's great concept. Great Duke. things, yeah. Oops. Activity is Brett Pinchcliffe. They like him. He's got to change his name, though. The one two that ball hit deep. He wasn't going to right field there way back. Maybe he looks up. You can't put it on the board. Yeah. Two run homer by Paul Canerco. And it's six two good guys. Hey what he was right there. He was short and quick wasn't he. He sets up good at the plate. Wimpy, he has looked at he's been impressive all spring long just 23 years old. Man. That pitch with it looked like a pretty good pitcher's pitch. Came in there, in off the plate, and he was just sure, so short and quick, was leading with that left elbow, and he creamed it to left. Right there, boy. Cleared that front side. Well, he really pulled. A lot of guys trying mm. to push in situations when they're down one and two. He pulled. You can't push a bat fast enough to hit major league pitching. Wow. Mags. Mags is lying hard to right. And he is popped up the center when he just missed hammering. Right side. 
David Segui, a very good first baseman. That's one out. Here's Norton. Drag down to third, walk and score. And if you're just joining us, he made a terrific play. Off A Rod back in the first inning. Alex scalded one and just picked him. Splitter out in front and the count nothing and two. Taking some other scores for you in the National League. Giants beat the Reds 11 to 8 at Center G Field. Fighting Fish over the Mets 6 to 2. Phillies beat the Braves as Norton is gone. Philadelphia over Atlanta 7 to 4. Dodgers came back. Raul Mondesi at a three run homer in the bottom of the ninth with two out on the 3 uh, 3 0 pitch. Greg Olson tie it. Mondesi homer in the 11th. To win it. Pretty good day, huh? Sitting there watching that, you knew that if he threw him fastball 3 0, he was going to be hacking. Yeah. I'll tell you, Mondesi's one of those guys, if you throw him a strike, you got you got to be almost out of your mind because he is up there cutting and slashing, especially well, in game winning situations. I know it's a tough situation, though, for the D backs and Olsen, too, because they had, you know, the three run lead. You got to throw him the strike. Yeah. You want to walk him, load him up where a double's going to. Tie it up. Abbott has granted a short and struck out. Ooh. We talked about it earlier. Even though Jeff hit 359 in the spring, it still was not the way that we know he can swing the bat. This man is a good hitter. And is going to be an outstanding hitter. He will get it on track. Yeah, he's Checks jumping. Well, he's got a little different move than he had last year. He's setting real quick. Now watch him, this pitch. He's setting real quick, trying to load up in a hurry. We didn't see that last year. Now watch how quickly he loads up. Right there. There's a two hopper, a little soft two hopper to Davis right over the top. And that'll do it. But not before. Paul Canerco's first home in a Sox uniform. We'll go to the bottom of the six. Sox by four. <laughs> Jeff Acero, Stan Williams, Dan Wilson talking over things as he has thrown a couple of home run balls. A couple of two run shots. One by Darren Jackson, one by Paul Canerco. Sox lead at six to two. David Segui. Slide deep to right, and he is single. There's a ground ball. Nice oh, pick man. by Durham. Yes. I'll tell you, the Sox are throwing some leather today. That is a great play. That's already behind Ray Durham. Look at the angle he got to make that play in shallow right field. Not many guys are going to get over there that quickly. Here's Jay Buhner. He's over two. Buhner's lined hard to center. Aaron Jackson made a nice catch. And a reminder, season ticket packages are still available at excellent locations throughout Comiskey Park. Call the White Sox at 312-674-1000. Two and zero the count to Buner. Come back and get it. There's one. That ball ripped. Boy, that's, a, that's what you call a seed. Oh, 
Well, he pretty much knew the fastball was coming. 6-2 lead for the Sox, 3-1 count, and he just bore, blah, blah, blasted that one through the hole. He did what? He blasted that one through the hole. Here's John Mabry. 99 pitches, wow. Rounded to third, and he has popped the second. Breaking ball over inside. Only two other games in progress around the big leagues. The Yankees leading Oakland 2 0, bottom of the third at the Coliseum. Top of the ninth in St. Louis, 7 5 Milwaukee. Mark McGuire has gone deep in that ball game. It's off the outside corner. Good rip on the 2 0. Well, Mabry. We always liked him when he was with the Cardinals. But watching him hit today in batting practice just didn't. I don't recall him being that quick or that strong when he was with St. Louis. He's big, 6 4, 2 10. Oh, yeah, he's a big. He appears like he's got a little bat speed. That ball hit hard. Mag's back, looks up. He'll have to take it off the wall. Here's the shot they got in. They got in the air. Yes. Beautiful play by Ordonez. Max can throw a bad play by Mabry. Four runs down. You got to make sure you can get in there. Yeah. That's a big out, too. Instead of second and third with one out and a possible big inning, there's a runner at third with two. And Max does a great job. That takes a tough bounce for him. But look at him. He grabs it with his bare hand and very quickly gets it in the second base. Tagged by Caruso. I'll tell you, the Sox have played some great defense tonight. Well, on this Mariner ball club, the last thing you want to do is run yourself out of an inning or make a bad base running play. You got to make sure you got to know who's out there, what his arm strength is, and you got to make sure that you can get into second base if you're John Mabry. So here is Russ Davis. He is double and he has struck out. Keith Folk. Started that game the other day against San Diego. Base six, retired six. So Mabry hit it hard, but a miscue. Well, this is his first game at the Kingdom. That slicing foul. A lot of strange things can happen in this ballpark. Wimby, you've played a lot of games here. Yeah. You've seen some funny things oh, happen in man. this ballpark. You got the Kingdom Triangle over there in right field where you can't see it. And you know, just the ball just comes out at different angles. You know, a lot of times you look foolish. Nice pick by Brooke Fordyce. Since Fordyce has joined the Sox coming over from the Reds, I'll tell you, he has really looked good behind the plate. And he's looked exceptionally good with the bat. Whoa. Yes. He's gone. He'll grab some bench. That'll retire the side. Sox catch a break right there. Take advantage of it. They don't score the Mariners. And we'll go to the seventh. Sox on top, six to two. Six two good guys here in the top of the seventh. James Baldwin striking out Russ Davis in the bottom of the sixth. What's the reaction right here? There's a breaking pitch. James into it as he went fishing. And Russ Davis bit. But a pitching change right here for the Mariners. It'll be the 24 year old right hander Brett Hinchliff. There you see in the spring what he did. So Brett making his major league debut. Mariner's 16th round selection back in 92. 
He'll face Darren Jackson, who's one for two, a big two run homer. Also a fine play in the outfield. There's strike one. Pinch lip last year at Lancaster and Tacoma. Tacoma was 10 and 8. The ball hammered back through the middle. DJ leads it off with a solid single to center. Well, he's hit the ball hard three times tonight already. Man. Man, he looked great every time we saw him in spring training. Certainly earned a spot on this ball club. So the veteran off the big start as here's Brooke Fordyce. He is single and he is lying hard to left. And I wouldn't put it past Jerry Manuel to put the running play on right here. Darren still runs well. And Fordyce has shown us that he can handle the bat pretty good himself. As we mentioned earlier, the Sox picked up 39 stolen bases this spring. Tensler reminds me of a hard throwing right hander we've got in our organization, Jason Lakeman. Lakeman can get it up there. We got some guys down in that farm team, farm system, I should say, that can rush it up to home plate. Watch out. Good Whoa. pick by Sagi. He's got great hands. Yeah, he's a good player. I'm not real crazy about his hair color, but I like it. I don't know if his dad likes it, Diego. If yeah. His dad doesn't like it, he'd probably get rid of it. <laughs> Diego, former teammate of mine, is a strong man. Pitch out, nothing on. Sweet Lou going with six rookie pitchers. But you know, I'd rather go with the young players and go with go pick up some veteran who has never been successful, so to speak. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather go with the young kids, and that's the way they decided to go. Why go out and get somebody who's a 500 to a below 500 pitcher when you got some pretty good arms who are young? You've got to give them a chance to play. Sox are in that boat this year. Sox happen to be in a situation with all the good young players they've got that they've raised in their own system, plus the ones they've acquired through trades. With the Giants mainly and, uh, and the California Angels. If you can't play these kids, then you shouldn't even have a minor league system. That's right. Well, I spend millions of dollars every year trying to develop players. When you develop them, then all of a sudden you don't play them. You're just tuning in, Sox, with one in the first, one in the fourth, two in the fifth, two in the sixth. Mariners with two home runs in the third. Pops him up. Davis. Ooh. There you see the attendance tonight, 51,656. Good a, crowd. Boy, they had a beautiful pregame ceremony. If you're just tuning in. Highlighted by the ceremonial first pitch being thrown out by Hank Aaron. It's marking the 25th anniversary of his 715th home run. Hank who at 755 in his career. The junior, well he had to do it. He homered in the third. I personally think Junior will catch that 755. He loves to play the game. Yeah. He's just a kid out there and baseball is so easy for him. I mean don't get me wrong he works hard to keep it that way but he can do just about anything he wants to do on a baseball. Field. Yeah and he has fun playing the game too. A lot of guys don't. Junior normally is the first one of the ballpark. He hits extra almost every day. In fact some of the people in the Mariner organization feel like if there's anything that's 
could be improved. Not hitting quite as much. <laughs> he loves it. Little number off the bat. Davis over to second base. Gian. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. Control, I don't know about that. He was making a transition right there. The control. Well, it's not a real good play by Guillen, too. He's trying to get the ball out of his glove to double up Ray Durham, which was physically impossible. The ball not hit hard. Look at him right here. I don't know. I got to no. agree with you. Yeah, it didn't I look like he, he had, had a good slide. Good hard slide by Darren Jackson. Ooh, I'd love to see that. Good hard nosed baseball right there. Now Durham will probably be off somewhere in this sequence. Mike Caruso stands in. He's the one for three. An RBI. And a run scored. Yeah, that, that didn't look like a possession right there. No. Well, one thing that was so encouraging is after James Baldwin gave up those two homers in the third inning, he just kept battling. You know, he's going to do that regardless. He's got a great competitive nature about him. And I would imagine that he's out of the ball game right now with just a super effort by James. Russo takes that pitch nicely down low. One and oh the count. Well, JB last year made some huge strides. Ten and three in the second half. And he's trying to become a leader on this ball club, and I think he's getting there. Yeah. One of the most pleasant personalities you ever want to be around. He loves to laugh. And yet he is on that bench when he is not pitching. He's pumping everybody up. He's Kind of guy will go over there when you're going bad, pat you on the fanny, and say the right thing. Now the Southern Pines, North Carolina. That's outside. Three and zero the count. Uh oh, well, Mike will be taken here, trying to get the big hurt to the plate. There's one. All right, Mikey, turn on this one. Durham takes off. And there's ball four. Durham at second, Caruso at first, and here comes the big hurt. Now this is the last thing that Lupinella wanted to see right here is Hinchliffe come in and have to face Frank Thomas in this situation making his major league debut. Big Frank two for three tonight a single a double and a run scored. It's the on deck hitter Paul Canerco who has homered. Reel him in. One and oh the count. Breaking ball. Two and oh the count. Now you can reel him in a little, a little tighter. Oh, and that thing gets to 2-0. The hitting zone for hitter gets a little bit smaller. He can zero in, locate, zone it in. All this does is just gives you a free swing if you get it where you want it. Oh, big hack by Thomas. Fastball upstairs. Frank didn't quite get on top of that one.
He tried to. Still got that little zone if he's looking at it. That ball hit hard in Get left up. field. Get him. Mabry goes back. He can't make the play. Here comes Durham. Here comes Caruso. And the Sox lead it 8 to 2. Big Frank, 3 for 4. Two doubles, two ribbies. And again, you get Frank Thomas against the rookie out there, he can reel him in. Nice going, Frank. There it is, belt tie. 2 1 pitch from the youngster. And I'll tell you what, Mabry did not read that ball real good off the bat. He's got to run to a spot rather than look up at it. Yeah, when the ball's hit that hard, you got to roll the dice. You yeah. got to try to go to the spot you think it's going to be. Here's Canerco. Yeah, you might get hit in the back of the head. I've but seen still. that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that happen too. Canerco, a two run homer, last inning. He's got himself a 1 0 count. Breaking ball. 8 10 and 0 for the Sox, 2 8 and 0 for Seattle. Mariners, who were 20 and 12 this spring, I believe that's their second best spring in their history. The ball and two strikes. That game in St. Louis now in the bottom of the ninth inning, 10-5 Brewers. As we mentioned, if you're just joining us, Mark McGuire, Homer. Tigers of Larry Parrish beat the Rangers 11 to 5 down at the ballpark. Boston over Kansas City 5 to 3 at Kauffman Stadium. Baltimore beat the Devil Rays 10 to 7 at Camden Yards. And the Yankees leading Oakland 2 0 top of the fifth at the Coliseum. Off the end of the bat. Davis is going to try to get him. He missed him. No, he said he's out of the baseline. So that'll retire the side, but the two run double by the big hurt, Frank Thomas, seventh inning stretch, socks by a half a dozen. Right now, let's check out our Miller Lite Major League scoreboard. There you see, as we mentioned, Boston over Kansas City, 5 to 3, 11 5. The Tigers over the Rangers down in Arlington. 10 7, Orioles over the Double Rays, 2 0. That's in the bottom of the fifth inning at the Coliseum. Yankees over the A's. Over the National League, 11 to 8. Giants beat the Reds. Fish over the Mets of Bobby Valentine, 6 to 2. 7 to 4, Phillies over the Braves. In 11 innings in an exciting ball game, Arizona winning that ball game 6 to 3 with two out ninth inning, two on round. Mondesi tied it up and then won it with another homer in the 11th, 8 to 6. 9 2, Expos over the Pirates, 10 to 5. Milwaukee leading St. Louis in the bottom of the ninth inning. And yeah, there's a look at Frank Thomas, the two run, two out double last inning. Gives the Sox an 8 to 2 advantage as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. And a new pitcher for the Sox, Keith Folk. Will pitch to Dan Wilson. There's first pitch fastball strike. Keith's numbers last year, 3-2, and two, a 4-1-3 ERA, appeared in 54 games, had one save. 38 hits in 56 and two-thirds. That's real good. Strike on the outside corner, 0-2. Wants it away. There's a slider. Misses outside. Well, Wimpy, we mentioned that Falk had not had his velocity back. It didn't appear. And then the other day, Saturday against the Padres, was best he's thrown the ball. Yeah. He retired six up, six down. Ooh, threw that one by him upstairs. So Wilson goes down. He's now one for three. He had a little giddy up on that one. Yes, he did. And the line on James Baldwin, six quality yeah. innings. Eight hits, two runs, and they were both solo homers. Look at this strikeout pitch. Some high heat. 
just below the letters. Here's Carlos Guillen. Swings through that heater. James walked but one, and you can't walk a whole lot of people, especially when you're facing the Mariners in this building. He struck out four. Made big pitches when he needed to. Pitch outside. Mariners stranded six base runners in the first six innings. Good change. Woo, way out in front. So it's one and two. Alex Rodriguez on deck. Take a look at this. He just holds it way back in his hand, throws as hard as he can, and he has that good screwball action. Change. Popped up. Fordyce looking up. Right on the Mariners side, and that is two up, two down. So Guillen, who homered in the third inning, is now one for four. And here's Alex Rodriguez. Boy, it'd be nice to get a 1-2-3 inning here in the seventh. Marius Alex. Yes. I bet she gets a lot of propulsions. Nice young man. Well, the young lady sitting beside you, uh, Lindsay. Lindsay, my niece. <laughs> She's got a little crush on Alex herself. Well, if you, you have to. There she is. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> she is. Gets that national exposure. Now, there's a good strike on the inside corner. One and one on A-Rod. And a very talented artist as well. Yes. She painted a terrific picture of Alex last year. And Junior. And Junior. Oh, yes. Dotting the outside corner. Meanwhile, if Hope can get this one, two, three inning, the chance lessons of facing Junior and A-Rod in the ninth inning. We are in the seventh. The Sox lead at eight to two. Outfield now, Darren Jackson very wisely moving over towards right center. There's a huge gap in left center between he and Jeff Abbott. One and two to A-Rod. Change misses down low. Now Alex has grounded out the third all three trips to the plate. He's got some pitches that he normally, when he's going good, will drive it to right center. Yeah, he's had a couple of good pitches to hit and down front, which sometimes, you know, even though he's one of the best players in the game, still he's 23 years old, and opening day, sometimes you get that juice flowing a little hard, that adrenaline rushing. Try yeah. to do a little too much. Well, he's had a terrific career. He's hit as high as 356. Oh, yeah, great changeup. Wow, one, two, three, go the Mariners. We have played seven from the Kingdom. Sox lead at 8-2. It's 8-2 good guys as we head to the top of the eighth inning here at the Kingdom in beautiful Seattle, Washington. The Sox have out hit the Mariners 10-8. Keith Folk, a very productive Bottom half of the seventh inning, he went one, two, three, two strikeouts and a pop up. And our condolences to our fine director, Skip Ellison, who is nursing a broken arm. Condolences? Yeah. Joe Groove, another member of our crew with the broken leg. Susie Evans has a broken fingernail. Very tight. We're just falling apart here. Who's next? <laughs> Off the end of the bat. <laughs> Guillen will retire Ordonez. See, I've got an albatross following me around and rain cloud. Wait Gulp. a minute. You just had a double eagle. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. And Pretty the albatross routine. is following you around? You know, I, well, I run out of luck real quick. Went <laughs> <laughs> from 75 to 85 in a matter of hours. <laughs> It'll be 95 tomorrow <laughs> as Greg Norton steps in. There's fastball strike. Brett Hinchliffe is the second pitcher for Seattle. He gave up two runs in the seventh. Well, the Sox have been so consistent. That's great. There's a shot over the glove of Guillen. He got a piece of it, so Norton gets on the board. 
Greg does have a run scored after he walked. Look at the Sox, one in the first, one in the fourth, two in the fifth, two in the sixth, and two in the seventh. That's good. Change up. Not a bad pitch. Norton, you're something else. Here's Jeff Abbott. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout tonight for Jeff, trying to get that first hit of the season. It's tough, isn't it, Hawkeroo? Oh, man. <laughs> it's the biggest hit of the year. Grounded to third, should be. Five, four to three. They turn it around the horn. Sox fail to score. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The good guys lead it eight two. Joe Groob in attendance tonight. Now Joe just <laughs> looks like that. <laughs> Very num, much num, like that. Baba. Keith Folk. First pitch to Junior. Good fastball inside corner strike. Griffey one for two, a home run. He has walked. That homer came in the third inning. Mariners put two on the board, a solo homer by Carlos Guillen, and then Griffey homered. James Baldwin gave up nada after that. Sox with three infielders on the right side of the field. And he pops this one up left side. Got jammed on a fastball. Norton. And he makes it exciting. There's one out. Here's our Toyota game summary. Sox lead at 8-2. to two. They about hit the M's 11-8. No errors. That's good. Frank Thomas, three for four, a couple of doubles, two RBIs. Griffey has his seventh opening day homer. But the Mariners have not been able to bunch a bunch of hits together. Bunch a bunch? You know what I mean. Big Frank. Edgar takes a strike. Big Frank off to a big start. Oh, yeah. David Segui is on deck. Martinez one for three. They leave a gap for him in left center. Oh, nice changeup. Well, he really has that thing working for him. That makes that fastball appear a little bit quicker to the eye of the hitter. Jackson moves a little bit more to right center. Misses down low, and individual tickets for all 1999 Sox home games are on sale now at Comiskey Park's box office, Ticketmaster, Ticket Centers, including Dominic's, Carson's, and Tower Records. And you can call 312-8311 Sox or online at Ticketmaster.com. So come on out. we got a good young team. Opening day is Friday. Kansas City comes to town, a 3 o'clock Central Time start. He wants it inside. He got it in there. Fly ball to left field. Abbott. There's two gone. Magula Ordonia has made a nice play defensively. Boy, he threw out Mabry. Big play. Could have been a huge play in this ball game. Yeah, that was two innings ago. Stopped a rally, even though Mags, who led everyone in hitting, hasn't let down defensively. There's a good changeup. Sagi way out in front nudges it foul. <laughs> David one for three, a single. Two-run homer by Darren Jackson. Two-run homer by Paul Canerco. Frank Thomas. Two-run double. Mike Caruso also drove in a run on a ground out. That fastball misses away. One and one. That went off to our left. So once again, Keith Polk pitching ahead in the count. That's good. Five in a row. No activity in either bullpen right now. 
and it's final. Milwaukee has beaten St. Louis 10 to 8. So we're the last game. No, we're not. New York Yankees in Oakland tied at two in the fifth. At the Coliseum, there's a fastball up high. Hmm. See, when Keith misses, it's just by a eyelash. And he's had great command of all of his pitches. Coming inside, he jammed him and fouls it back. Jay Buhner is on deck. There's Jaybird coming off of that elbow surgery where he was really limited to, in his playing time last season. 15 homers, 45 runs batted in. There's a good change. Foul just underneath us. Well, you think in this situation right here with 3 2, 2 out, bottom of the eighth inning, a six run lead, he's just going to keep pumping fastballs. But Keith Folk has such confidence in all of his pitches. Yeah. He'll throw them. The last yeah. thing you want to do is put somebody on a free pass. Fastball, he threw that one by him, and he fouls that one out of play left side. Well, that same pitch had not he thrown the chains, the previous pitch may have hit it very hard someplace. In fair territory. It's nice when the plan comes together. Yeah. Some of our fans have departed. Big crowd, over 51,000 here tonight. And there's another high fastball. Can't get on top of it. And Jeff Abbott will run out of room. So before we throw this 3-2 pitch again, let's pause for a station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. Back at the kingdom with Ken Harrelson, Tom Pachork, and here is that 3-2 pitch, and he just misses. Lord and Lord. Ball outside. Yeah, he did have to move his glove. You know, Fordyce had to be sitting up on the outside corner. So here's Bone. He's bad to the bone. Jay Buhner. Yeah, very good commercial. Yeah. With Buhner. That's that cute. Really cute. Yeah. They are notorious for those good commercials. The best here. I've ever seen were when you were playing here, when you were doing them, though, Duke. Oh, yeah. Well, we didn't hold on, have a whole lot of equipment back then. I just liked the way y'all improvised. That's what it was. Had a camera. Go, of, go do it. No <laughs> script. No script. Oh. <laughs> you don't need a stinking script. No storyboard. No. Ooh, coming inside on 0-2, misses. Those were great commercials. Yeah, they do a nice job here now between innings. Really oh, entertaining yeah, the fans. Really turn this situation around. Yeah. It used to be called a mausoleum, I'll tell you, it's anything but that. Ooh, no. And then they're going to be moving into Safeco. In 101 days. Yeah. Change misses, so the count goes full to Buner with Mabry on deck. Ooh, change up. And here is that commercial we mentioned about Buner. The Safeco field sure is nice, huh? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Can't be playing out in the old sunshine. Hike one! Hike two! Some days, though, it can be really bright. Very 
nicely done. That's good. Good stuff. Well, what Nardi Contreras is telling him right now is he said, you got good stuff. You're throwing the ball well. He's been ahead of both Segui and Buhner, and he lost them both. So don't try to get too fine. That's all. We got a six-run lead here, and it's the bottom of the eighth inning. And you don't want that lineup to turn over. Well, you don't want any, some less than others, obviously. This is one of them. Yeah. We don't want to get to the top of the order. You no. get Billy Siemens warming in the Sox pen. Now let's Junior take the rest of the night off. He and A Rod. Ooh, good swing by Mabry. Now here's a guy, Hawk, a 284 career hitter. Just 28 years old. It's like he's going to help this team from an offensive standpoint. Well, they've got Butch Husky also. Right. That and they get the left-handers going. The Husky will play. They also have Matt Mieske. He always killed us when he was with the Brewers. Yep. Yes. Inside corner strike. 0 and 2. Take him right here. Looks to me that Mabry really wants that ball away. Let's get those arms extended out over the plate. Going in there, jammed him. It's a good pitch. Whew. Nothing, if he keeps that ball fair, it's going to shatter that bat. Nothing, if he hits it hard, it's going to go dead foul. Yeah. Base runner is David Segui at second base. Jay Buhner at first. Sox lead at 8-2 here in the eighth. Russ Davis is on deck. Change got him. Third strikeout for Keith Folk. The Mariners failed again to score, and after eight, the Sox lead at eight two. That's the story here in the top of the ninth inning. Eight and eleven and zero for the good guys. Two eight and zero for the Mariners. And the season opener, nineteen ninety nine. First of a three game set here at the Kingdom tomorrow night. Jim Parquet against Jamie Moyer. Then on Wednesday, John Snyder against Freddie Garcia as Darren Jackson leads it off against Brett Hinchliffe. Darren has played well tonight. He is two for three, two run homer, solid single, and made a real good catch in center field. That ball chopped to Hopper. There's one out potty areas at Comiskey Park, including the patio. Potty areas. That's right. You weren't supposed to pick that up. Terrace rooms and diamond suites. They are great for entertaining clients or groups of any size. You can call the White Sox at 312-674-1000 to book your potty today. Yo. Potty on. Potty area. 312-674-1000. A lot of potty oh areas. Oh, boy. Comiskey Park. That, too. Look for dice. Swung the bat well tonight. He's one for three. Hit the ball hard, very hard twice. But the biggest thing he has done, he's worked himself a heck of a ball game behind that plate. Yeah. You know, we talked about pitching inside. Bruce Brooke Fordyce getting a lot of inside fastball signs. Out in front, hooks it, and it's going foul. And we've always said, Hawk, the better the team, the more you got to pitch them inside. If you don't pitch the Seattle Mariners inside, they are going to absolutely beat your brains out and take your lips right off. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because great hitters get jammed. You stay away, away, away from these guys. Oh. You're gonna put some crooked numbers up on that scoreboard. Oh. There's a strike. Two and two, the four dice. There's two good, good innings by folks. That ball hit deep to left field. Get it. Breaking pitch. Not deep enough, is it? No, he dare. Mabry hauls it in. Two go. Tell you what, he gives himself a chance to do some damage up at the plate. Brooke Fordyce. <laughs> Mabry uses most of that six foot four frame. That'll bring up Ray Durham. 
Ray two for four tonight. A leadoff triple. He scored. Single in the fifth. And he scored again in the seventh. And get that one. And then a count of one, two. And a reminder, it'll be White Sox static sticker schedules. Night from Coca-Cola this weekend. Royals, all fans. Get tickets for these and all games by calling 312-831-1 Sox. That's Friday at 3 o'clock. Our home opener at Comiskey Park, the Sox against Kansas City. And what are you going to get? White Sox static sticker schedules from Coca-Cola. Good. Those are good to have. Here. You want to read it? What are we going to get? White Sox static sticker specials. Schedules. White Sox static sticker schedules. That's why you read all the big ones. No two pitch breaking ball down low. Four home runs in this ball game. Carlos Guillen is first major league homer in the third. Ken Griffey Jr. is 351st major league homer. As Ray is three for five. He just hammered that one. So great speed aboard. He'll be off sometime in the sequence. Man. One two got a hanging breaking ball and Ray just creams it. Well, he recognized this one from the get go. Little dot coming up there. Hand stayed back of a belt high and just goes out and gets it. Now you saw Dan Wilson being ahead in the count wanted to try to back door him and he just center cut it. So here's Caruso. Took a little something off of Mike way out in front. Mike drove in a run in the first inning, singled and scored in the fourth. He walked and scored in the seventh. Ray, just a decent lead. There's a chopper, the two hopper to Davis. Up with it. Over to Gee, and they force Durham. That'll retire the side. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth in the season opener. Sox lead at eight to two. There's <laughs> a friend of Sarah and Andy Evans. <laughs> Getting it down. <laughs> you think she's given up yet? Ha! That's a story. <laughs> and a pitching change, Wimpy. Billy Seamus comes out to work the ninth inning. Billy, four and three last year, a 357 earned run average. He earned 18 saves. 54 hits and 70 and two thirds. 22 walks, 56 strikeouts, and he will work as quickly as anyone. Russ Davis will lead it off as he takes upstairs. Russ is double, struck out twice. We mentioned the two home runs by the Mariners, Guillen and Junior, for the Sox. Darren Jackson. That's high in the center field. That's a piece of cake. And Paul Canerco hit the other one. And a big out, lead man down. Well, we talked. From Las Vegas on Saturday about how the Sox with a young ball club and Jerry Manuel has talked about it as well coming off great muscle memory from 1998 when they finished up the season very very strong played 15 games over the 500 mark after being 17 down at one point to finish at 80 and 82 and the skipper Jerry Manuel was talking about how as Dan Wilson takes a strike. He thinks it's very important they get off to a decent start this year not like they did in 1998 it was a horrible start. Oh and to the count to Wilson. Now we got the makings of a great start here tonight beating an excellent team eight to two here in the ninth inning. Wilson one for three. Seamus will get it and throw it just misses nice pitch. Carlos Guillen on deck. He's gone. Yeah. He'll grab some bench. Two out. And a reminder, White Sox baseball on WGN has been produced by Susan Evans, directed by Phil Moore. Skip Ellison. Our associate producer is Mean Joe Groove. And the executive producer of WGN Sports is Bob Borwald. Get your red hot, red hot, belt high fastball, and he threw it right by Dan Wilson. There's strike one to Guillen.
He and homered in the third inning his first major league homer. First major league hit. One and one to count. There's a two hopper Norton's got it. over the first yes and this ball game is over so Billy Seamus comes on nails them one two three as the Sox come out with some great defense tonight some outstanding pitching and some timely hitting as they win the season opener by a score of eight to two and Wimpy and I'll be back to wrap it up. <laughs> 